What's going on? Welcome back to Talking About Baseball. Today, I will be talking about 20 players that were surprisingly not traded at this year's trade deadline. There were a lot more than 20, but these are the main 20 in my opinion, so let's get into it. Starting off the video, we have two Chicago Cubs. The first one for me will be second baseman Nico Horner. He's currently hitting a 250 with a 326 on base percentage and 668 OPS. He has four bombs, 33 RBIs, a whopping 16 stolen bases as he's a pretty solid base stealer, an 89 OPS plus, which is a large drop off from the year before, three DRS, which is surprising for a guy who's such a great defender at second base, and a 1.3 war. He was mentioned in a lot of trade rumors for guys for teams that needed middle infield help, and as the Cubs were talking about long-term building, it wouldn't have been shocking if he got traded as he only has two years left on his contract. Speaking of only having two years left on their contract, you have right-handed pitcher Jameson Tyone. He has a 3.35 ERA right now and 104 and two-thirds innings pitched. He only has 82 strikeouts, but after starting off the season on the shelf, he's been great accumulating 1.6 war for the Cubs and has been one of their better pitchers. Another pitcher on the in Chicago, this one for the south side as a reliever, will be Steven Wilson. He has a 3.86 ERA through 30 in the third innings with 32 Ks. He came over from the Padres in the Dylan C. Steel, and despite the fact that his whip is not great at a 1.42, and his, he has accumulated exactly zero baseball reference war, he's still been a pretty solid reliever for Chicago this year. Yet another reliever, this one throwing from the left side, will be Sam Mole of the Cincinnati Reds. He has a 2.52 ERA. He hasn't pitched a ton this year in only 25 innings as a lefty specialist, getting 27 Ks. Less than one runner per inning, and he has a 0.7 war. Next up, we have a combination of two Rockies catchers in Elias Diaz and Jacob Stallings. Starting off with Diaz, he's hitting 275 with a 713 OPS. Five home runs, 31 RBIs, 94 OPS plus, and a pretty solid defense from the catcher position with 5 DRS and a 1.3 war. The other guy, Jacob Stallings, is backup, but also kind of, they split time, so not really a full backup. He does have a worse batting average of 263, but a higher OPS at nearly 800 at 798. He also has five home runs with 25 RBIs and 117 OPS plus. While well, he isn't a great defensive catcher with a negative one defensive run saved, he does have 1.4 war. Now we have Tiger's second baseman Andy Abanez. Despite having lots of control, he is an older player at 32 years old. He's a great contact hitter, hitting 284 on the season so far. He has really good defense at second with 6 DRS. He only has four home runs, as like I said, he's a contact hitter, and he has accumulated 1.4 war and a 111 OPS plus on the year. Moving on, we have a group of three angels that, that includes two hitters and a pitcher. Starting off with the pitcher, it is left-handed pitcher Tyler Anderson. It was shocking to me he was not dealt at the deadline, as he has a 2.96 ERA and 130 and two-thirds innings already. Strikeout numbers are not very high with just 99, but he already has 4.5 war, the most war out of anyone on this entire list which obviously means he's the most valuable. He's been a great pitcher for the Angels this year, and it was surprising as he only has two years left on his deal that he was not traded. Another guy that was surprising was not traded was Luis Renjifo. He was talked about going to a lot of the same teams as Nico Horner, and he can play a lot of different positions. He's hitting 306 on the year with a 777 OPS. His defense is suspect wherever he goes as he has a negative 4 DRS, but like I mentioned, he can play a lot of different positions. He's also a great base stealer with 24 on the year, a 116 OPS plus, and 1.8 war. His teammate Taylor Ward is currently having a down season, but he's still been a great power hitter with 16 bombs and 54 RBIs. The batting average is under 230 with a 229 right now, but with his slugging percentage, the OPS is still above 700 with a 712. The OPS plus is just below 100 at a 97. He's a solid defender and left with a 3 DRS, and that gives him a 1.1 war. One of the few guys that the Marlins didn't trade away was Anthony Bender. He does have a lot of team control, so it does make some sense that he was not traded. He has a 3.83 ERA through 40 innings with 42 strikeouts, a 1.25 whip, and 0.8 war, which is really solid for a relief pitcher. 
Moving on, we have four we have four athletics players. The first two are both relievers, both throwing from the left side. Starting off, we have Scott Alexander with a 3.13 ERA, 23 innings pitched, 13 strikeouts, and a 0.6 war. His counterpart, TJ McFarland, his second trip to Oakland in his career. He hasn't been quite as good with a 4.28 ERA, but he does, has pitched much more with 40 innings pitched. He also is not a strikeout pitcher, recording just 28 Ks in those 40 innings. Now we move on to the two outfielders that the Athletics did not trade away. Both of them pretty horrible in the field. The first one will be Miguel Andujar. He has a 286 batting average with a 708 OPS. Just four home runs on the year, which is surprising from him as he is a power hitter. And the OPS plus is just above 100 at 104. One DRS, which is surprising as he's not a very good defender. And the war is just at 0 0.3, but he could be a solid impact bat for a team. And finally, the guy that it would have been really cool to see get traded, outfielder Brent Rooker, the final player for the Athletics. He's hitting a 297 on the year with a 965 OPS. He already has 3.8 war despite being horrible in the field. And he has 26 home runs, 77 RBIs, a surprising 7 stolen bases as he's not very fast, and a whopping, wow, 174 OPS+. Plus. Coming in next, we've got left-handed pitcher Blake Snell. He was horrible to start the year off for the Giants, and then just recently, he is, he's coming off of four outstanding starts and has brought his ERA down to a 5.1, which still isn't great, and the war is still sitting at a negative 0.1, but I think he still could have gotten some trade interest despite the fact that the contract is huge and his overall stats aren't great. The whip is much better than last year at a 1.28, last year being his Cy Young year, and he has 61 strikeouts through 47 and two-thirds. His, his deadline market heated up a lot the days before the deadline, and it wasn't always super clear if he was going to get traded or not, but he ended up getting dealt. Another left-handed pitcher, this one on the other side of the country, and Garrett Clevenger from the Rays. He has a 3.19 ERA and was highly rumored to get traded as, as he has almost a one war at 0 0.9 as a relief pitcher. He has pitched a lot in 43. He has pitched a lot, getting 42 and a third inning so far, and he's been great with the strikeout numbers with 54 strikeouts. His teammate, starting pitcher Zach Littell, has also been very good for the Rays this year, with a 4.18 ERA, 114 innings pitched, and just 105 Ks in those innings, which is nothing to frown upon. The WHIP isn't great at a 1.35, and the WAR is just all right at a 1.2. The final Rays player on this list was first baseman Yandy Diaz. Everyone thought he was going to get traded and it ended up not happening. He was great last year winning the AL batting title, but has kind of fallen off this year with a 271 average. On base percentage is still solid at a 327 and the OPS at a 724. He has 9 home runs which is which he's now pacing for less than last year, a respectable 49 RPIs, a 107 OPS plus, an absolutely horrible negative 3 DRS which is not surprising as he's horrible in the field, which all equates to a 0 0.8 war. The final two players we have are both relievers. The first one that we have is not in the country that he is up in Toronto for the Blue Jays. His 1.67 ERA and pending free agent was not traded. 32 and a third innings for Chad Green, 28 strikeouts, an amazing 0 0.87 whip, and a 1.3 war as a reliever. He's been putting up a great season, and although Yimi Garcia found his way out of there, Chad Green could not, which was very surprising. I'm assuming it's because the Blue Jays were asking for too much for him. And the final player on this 20-player list is right-handed closer Kyle Finnegan of the Nationals. The Nationals traded away a lot of their relievers, headlined by Hunter Harvey and Dylan Floro. Finnegan's 3.48 ERA was not dealt. He has 44 strikeouts in as many innings, 28 saves, and exactly one war on the season. Hope you enjoyed this video. It was one of the quicker ones of the deadline. Those were 20 players that I was shocked to see not get traded. There will be more videos coming out this week, and I hope you enjoyed that one, and I'll see you next time on Talking About Baseball. Bye.